This is Dr. Fred Foy Strang, and welcome to the Moment for Mission podcast. I'm happy you're taking some time to join me today. There have been numerous occasions in my life when I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what to do or where to go. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you are there. Today on Moment for Mission, I'm considering possibilities in mission. This Fred Foy fact applies to our topic today. Cecily and I have served in missionary service in East Africa for many years. I first went as a volunteer in 1982 and then returned with my new family in 1987. Since then, we've returned almost every year for short-term service ventures. Now, these past five years, Cecily and I have returned to living full-time in Kenya, working with the underserved Maasai people. We'll continue to help as long as we're able, but again on shorter stay basis. It's been such a blessing to be welcomed as part of this rich and beautiful community and culture. So now we have just returned from Africa to the United States after concluding our five-year term of service, and we are seeking the next way can, we can make a difference. This uncertainty is, at the same time, both exciting and frightening. <laughs> So, with that in mind, think about this. When you have 0% certainty, then you have 100% possibility. Let me say that again. When you have 0% certainty, then you have 100% possibility. Now, I want to give you a couple of biblical examples because that's what I do. I've studied all that. So, consider the Israelites, in their escape from Egypt. It comes from Exodus chapter 14. If you're not a Bible reader, maybe you saw Prince of Egypt, the Disney film, or the the Ten Commandments with um, Charlton Heston, or a number of of recaps of those things, of different, different ones that have told that story over the years. But as those Israelites ventured toward the promised land, they came face to face with a giant obstacle, the Red Sea. Behind them came the army of Pharaoh in hot pursuit. They were bent on the complete destruction of the Israelites. So let me ask you, what appeared to be the certainty of these vagabonds for arriving in the promised land? What ideas might they have had to get out of the mess that they found themselves in? Would any person in that entire mass of humanity even begin to remotely think of the possibilities that God could enact. Who would have thought that the solution to their time of 0% uncertainty would be the parting of the Red Sea, the appearance of a cloud of fire, the safe passage for all the Hebrews, and the certain death to the army of the Pharaoh? Or consider Mary and Martha. And their brother, Lazarus, comes from from John chapter 11. These ladies had sent for Jesus as their brother, Lazarus, was very ill. But Jesus delayed additional days before he came to Bethany. By the time Jesus arrived, Lazarus had died and was four days in the tomb. There was still grieving. There was disappointment. There was doubt. Jesus was even chastised. Lord, if you had only come earlier. But the earthly life of Lazarus was now over. There wasn't anything that could be done. It was too late. Mary and Martha had 0% certainty that Jesus would heal Lazarus because his death was sure. It had already come. It's too late, Jesus. Please don't move the stone door to the tomb. The body is already going to smell. Who could have imagined the incredible possibility of God 
to move in this situation? Would any person gathered there have believed for one moment the outcome that God already knew? Jesus did not heal Lazarus' sickness. Jesus raised the dead man to life. Their zero percent of certainty was turned upside down as God's possibility came bursting forth. Now, I believe God is a God of infinite possibilities. Perhaps it's only when we are down to that zero percent of certainty that the powerful hand of God can move to achieve possibilities that we could not even imagine. There's something to be considered when we look at the life of Jesus. The Greek word describes his position in this world, kenosis, or emptying himself. Jesus became nothing in order for God to do his mighty work. Now, this is a really hard lesson for me to consider. I'm a person who likes to do things. I want to fix it. I want to, and I am often able to use my mind and my skill set to effect solutions to problems. Now, that in and of itself, in a proper perspective, is a good thing. Of course, now there's a balance between being a good steward of the gifts and abilities that God has given and realizing at the core of my being that it is God who is the giver of all good things, the good, good father of all creation, the master of infinite possibilities. When I'm overly focused on myself, on my abilities, on my strengths, it leads to an unhealthy isolation from community and an overinflated view of my own perceived prowess. It can become a place where I find myself thinking something like this. I got this. I don't need you, God. But what unfathomable possibilities have I missed? because of my insistence on being the end-all and the be-all. There's an old cliche I remember my grandmother often repeating to me, Fred Foy, honey, let go and let God. So let me offer a couple of suggestions for your moment for mission today based on what we've been talking about. First, if you are in an uncertain place, try not to be discouraged or overly stressed, but rather consider that this uncertainty is actually unlimited possibility. And second, if you are in an uncertain place, it is really important to take a moment for mission. Find that quiet place today. Carve out a significant moment. See if you can relax and breathe and clear your head and just be. When you are centered and relaxed, then you think about your life mission and the unlimited possibilities before you. Well, I sure appreciate you listening today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast. And if you think it might be helpful to a friend, pass along the website so they can listen as well. www.momentformission.com This is Fred Foy Strang reminding you, have a great day. <music>